Ding dong, who's there? Knock knock. Knock knock who? It's Michael's Toys. Over the weekend, I was in Portland, Oregon, and I visited the Peculiarium. Yeah, the gift shop contained some really weird stuff, and I got the goods. Some of this stuff, I'm not even sure is legal, but you know what? I'm not afraid of prison. Anyway, they're in here, and I'll show you, I'll show you a couple of them. First of all, we've got ourselves a double-headed quarter. This one I'm a little bit worried about showing, because it looks and feels exactly like a regular quarter, except instead of having a head side and a tail side, it has a head side and another head side. So my fear is that this is pretty much a counterfeit quarter. I could pass this off and have made 25 cents. I really would have actually lost $11.75 because it costs $12. If Owning stuff that's this passable as currency is illegal? Well then, ladies and gentlemen, we got them. I don't own this, I'm just holding it under citizen's arrest. Um, you're welcome. Look, this is what we're really here to talk about. This weird thing, comet vomit. What is comet vomit? Well, we can tell what chemical compounds exist out there in outer space beyond Earth. There's a number of techniques to do this, and what we mainly find out there is, well, stuff like hydrogen and helium, right? The most common elements in the universe. They're very important, very fascinating, but it becomes a little monotonous, right? Well, in 2014, we landed a probe on a comet called Comet 67PCG. It's shaped a bit like a rubber duck. It's got these two big lobes connected by a neck. At its widest, it's about 4.3 kilometers long, and it's traveling at a max speed of 135,000 kilometers per hour. The most mind-blowing visual from the entire mission was this one, put together by Twitter user Landrew79. It is an animation made up of a series of images taken by Rosetta over the period of about 25 minutes. A lot of measurements were taken, and a lot of different chemical compounds were detected, including 16 organic compounds. Now that's pretty amazing. It leads more credence, more evidence, to the claim of panspermia. Panspermia hypothesizes that because we know that organic compounds and complicated arrangements of them in things that we would call life can survive in the vacuum of space for extended periods of time, despite being bombarded by cosmic rays and intense radiation, comets and asteroid fragments and space dust could transmit the building blocks of life from planet to planet. Life here on Earth may have begun on Mars or in some completely different solar system with a completely different sun billions of years ago, only to have arrived here because some wayward comet crashed into Earth in its early days, put those compounds into our oceans, for instance, and then, given a little bit of time, we arrived. Now, because we're discovering organic compounds outside of Earth, well, it might be a pretty good theory. Now, Back to the comet vomit. A list of the 16 organic compounds found, detected on Comet 67PCG was published. And there are things, uh, many of which, that you can easily get and sell to people. So the fine purveyors of comet vomit took that recipe and put those chemicals into a vial so that you can smell them and take a whiff of what a comet might smell like if it was here on Earth. I have no idea what is in this file. I don't know which of the compounds detected on Comet 67PCG they put in it. They do say that they did not include the dangerous gases, so I guess that's good. But let's go through some of the things that were found on the comet. One of the most important was glycine, the simplest amino acid. Ethylamine, which has an ammonia-like odor. I bet I'll smell something like that in this vial. Propylene glycol was detected on the comet, which is used uh, frequently here on Earth to create uh, stage fog. It's also used in vaporizers to deliver medicine or drugs to those who uh, wish to inhale it. Not a vape niche, but a vape com. Vape, vape comet. 
also detected on the comet acetamide, which has a bond similar to the essential bond between amino acids and proteins, acetone, which is commonly found in paint thinners and nail polish removers. It's also produced and disposed of in our bodies through metabolism. Uh, it's found in our blood and urine. Propionaldehyde was detected both in this comet and also elsewhere in the universe, like the molecular cloud Sagittarius B2 near the center of the Milky Way galaxy. Uh, now, it has, apparently, a slightly irritating fruity odor. Uh-huh. Guys, look, comets, outer space in general, is kind of stinky. It's just that you can't go there and take a whiff of it because if it's near vacuum, you'd die pretty quickly. But if you could bring pieces of, of, the, the, of gas clouds back to Earth, or if you brought a comet back down to Earth and took a whiff of it, it sounds like it would be irritating, ammonia-like, but also a bit fruity. So uh, I'm excited to take a whiff of this concoction, which contains many of the things we know exist in the comets of outer space. The reason I'm nervous is that one of the chemicals detected on Comet 67 BCG, which is what this vial is based on, was methyl isocyanate, which Wikipedia says is, quote, a highly toxicating and irritating material. It is extremely hazardous to human health. It was the principal toxicant involved in the Bhopal disaster, which killed nearly 3,787 people initially and officially 19,787 people in total. I hope they didn't put any of that in this vial. There's only one way to find out. We're gonna take a whiff of a comet. Comet vomit. Are you guys ready? Here we go. Okay. I feel like this might be really old. Here's the vial, all right? And as you can see, the amount of liquid in here is just tiny. It's just like three or four drops of liquid. I don't know if it's evaporated out because this product is old, or if this is about all they could manage to put in there safely or affordably. Here we go, I'm gonna unscrew this. I'm gonna take a whiff. Oh, it's actually pretty good. Wow. <clears throat> wow, so it does smell a bit like nail polish remover, but like it's scented, like, um, it, it's scented, but it's just, it's like chemicals, like, um, like cleaning chemicals. It definitely just smells like cleaning chemicals, which I guess makes sense because we know that there's uh, uh, ethylamine in here, which has an ammonia-like odor, but the fruitiness kind of, that might be the propionaldehyde, it also smells like fingers, and I'm wondering if it's my own hands that I'm smelling. Come on, guys, you got smelly fingers, right? Oh man, there's not much liquid in here. I wonder if it's evaporating really quickly. Come on, get out. Oh yeah, there we go. Ugh, okay. Yeah, it's a little bit gross, too. Like, glue, like gluey or something? Anyway, uh, Comet 67 PCG also is made up of a bunch of, you know, ice and, and um, uh, molecular oxygen, stuff like that, that might not have much of an odor to us. But this is pretty neat. I don't know why there's so little inside of it. I feel like I'm not getting that strong of a whiff. But, oh, if you concentrate it, it's really... <laughs> All right, so a gift you can give to those who love space or those you just don't like. Comet vomit. A whiff of outer space. <sighs> outer space isn't just something to look at. It's something that we can also stick in our nose holes now. So thank you, innovators and product uh, creators. I'll see you next time, guys. And as always, thanks for watching.